Hey, beloved friends all over the world, I come to you tonight with an urgent message about breaking the power of witchcraft. And as I was in prayer, the Lord began to speak to me, and he said that I must release this message. It is urgent. It is time sensitive. And so I'm being obedient to what I, I was instructed to do. And I would encourage you to maybe share this with somebody. Here's why I'm sharing this. And I'll give you, I'll give you some backdrops of what I'm, what I'm talking about tonight. But one of the reasons why I'm sharing this is because it has come to my understanding. It's been revealed to me that many believers, many people are under witchcraft attacks. They are actually in the throes of a spiritual battle and they don't realize that what is, what is actually fueling the attack or fueling the spiritual battle is a spirit of witchcraft. And so I want to show you how to identify it and we're going to show you how to break it in a minute. But you got to share this. This is one of the most important messages I've ever done on a Facebook live. Okay. And so many people right now are under attack. They're under attack and they don't recognize it as a spirit of witchcraft. I'm going to go back and I want to show you what I mean by witchcraft in a minute. But I'm going to go back to one of my first trips to Africa. Uh, the first time I went to minister in Africa years, many, many years ago. <clears throat> and I remember at the preaching after a long time, a, a long time preaching and being very exhausted. I was in the, the, the quarters that I was staying in. And as I was in these quarters, I had what I thought at the time was a dream, but it wasn't a dream. I thought it may have been even have been a vision. It wasn't a vision. It was what I now know was a trance. I had gone into a trance. And in the trance, and I won't go into all the details of it, but essentially, essentially I saw what was a mermaid-like figure, a woman, a very beautiful being. And what she wasn't a human being, but she was beautiful. And in the dream, I was mesmerized by this thing, this mermaid. And so as I was going toward this thing, and my hand was street stretching out to this thing that looked like a woman, I immediately came to my senses. I literally snapped out of it. I came out, the spell broke. And when the spell broke, I recognized how malevolent this was. And what began to happen was, when the spell broke, I began, I said, in Jesus' name, I shouted and I broke out, right? And I began to pray in tongues. And when I did that, the most evil presence filled my room. The most evil presence filled my room. I remember calling my wife. We talked on the phone. My bill from that, that conversation was over $900 because that's how long we talked. And I began to pray and pray and pray. And the Lord showed me that this was actually a principality that had attacked me because of the work that we were doing in that particular region and territory. And this, it was at that point, now I knew before, but it was at that point, I really began to understand that witchcraft is real. Now notice I said the word mesmerize. The, the actual, there are two words I'm going to talk about tonight, but one of the words uh, for witchcraft or to be bewitched is, is a Greek word, magia. And that's where we get the word magic from. And it means to enchant, to mesmerize, to seduce, to bewitch, so forth and so on. Another word for witchcraft we find in uh, Galatians 3, verse 1, uh, and it talks about, oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Bewitched. Now, that's, that, that's a different word, baskaino. And the word baskaino is a word that doesn't just mean to mesmerize, but it also means, it means to slander right? It means to, um, it means to speak ill of, right? It can mean gossip. And I'm going to break all of this down quickly, but you have to understand that the enemy uses witchcraft to attack believers. And many of you don't even recognize that you've been under a witchcraft attack. And I'll show you how you can identify it in just a minute. But many of you have been under a witchcraft attack and you didn't even know that's what it was. And because you were ignorant of it, 
Ephesians chapter 6 talks about the rulers of the darkness, skotos, which means ignorance. It, it literally, it literally is empowered by the ignorance of believers because they don't recognize it. And so there, there are several areas that you have to understand that many people come under bondage to a spirit of witchcraft. First of all, when we use the word baskaino, it deals with what is spoken, what words that are spoken that you come into agreement with, right? So a lot of times believers come into agreement with a spirit of witchcraft because they've come into agreement with false words, false doctrine, false teaching, something that is 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 erroneous or something that is evil, they've come into agreement with it and don't even realize it. I remember breaking a spirit of witchcraft off of a woman who had been told that she would have a sickness in her body. And this was disguised as a prophetic word. Let me tell you something. That's not prophecy. Cursing people is not prophetic. Telling people that somebody something bad is going to happen to them is not prophetic. Telling somebody they're going to get sick if they leave your church is not prophecy. That is witchcraft. That is absolutely witchcraft. And if you don't fall out of agreement with it, it can operate in your life. Now, a lot of believers say this to me. Well, what about the Bible says, whom, whom God has blessed, no man can curse. You got to keep reading that story in Numbers, first of all. But secondly, when you apply the principle of Isaiah 54, verse 17, you begin to understand that there is a condition, there's a clause to that verse. It says an and, and being a conjunction, every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn, which means you have a responsibility as a believer to condemn the tongue that rises against you. And in this case, that tongue is the enemy. That, that tongue is the accuser of the brethren. And many of you didn't recognize that, that witchcraft was attacking you. And so you aided and abetted the attack. I'm coming in a minute because you got to hear this. You literally aided and abetted the attack because you didn't recognize the nature of what was attacking you. And in this particular season, there is an all-time assault in the realm of the spirit against many believers. And you must be able to discern what it is that is trying to come against you and take authority over it. Some of you don't even realize that, that this thing, let me give you an example. Uh, there's this thing, and people have been writing to me about it. There's this thing that's being disguised as prophecy where somebody say, well, I, I located you in the spirit. I located you in the spirit. I located you in the spirit and I saw this and I saw that a lot of that stuff has nothing to do with Jesus, the Holy Spirit or God. A lot of it, I'm not saying all of these things, but a lot of it has to do with the occult, the new age it has to do with astral projection where somebody is trying to project themselves and, and, and engage in demonic surveillance, trying to figure out what you're doing and what that's not a word of knowledge. God doesn't need demonic surveillance to know anything about you. God's omniscient. He knows everything about you. He doesn't even need to watch you. That's how omniscient God is. God has all knowledge. So everything that can be known, that will be known, even that which is unknown, God knows it. <laughs> so we don't need to, to engage in witchcraft or to embrace witchcraft or even to sit under witches in order to get knowledge from God because God is all knowing. He reveals things to us by his spirit. So I need you to hear that. The other day I was literally, um, well, this was some time ago. I remember being in my, my, um, uh, I was somewhere and, and in the room and I just felt something coming over me. I literally felt like I was getting dizzy. I felt like I was being feeling fatigued. And I know what many of you are thinking. Oh, you need to get tested for COVID. <laughs> no, I'm totally, I'm totally, uh, um, uh, free and immune from, from that. But, but I was feeling this physical thing in my body. And God spoke to me. He says, son, this is a witchcraft attack against you. He said, take authority over it. And I began to take authority over it. And the moment I began to take authority over it, it began to break. 
It began to break. It began to break. It began to break. And some of you don't even realize that what you think is just, you know what, you've been tired lately. Or you've been feeling like giving up. You've been feeling discouraged. You've been feeling despair. You've been feeling like, you know, I want to quit my assignment. Go talk to uh, a brother, Elijah the prophet. He felt the same way because Jezebel sent out a witchcraft attack against Elijah and he was ready to quit. And that's why many of you don't realize the reason you've been ready to quit is not sporadic. It's not arbitrary. It's not because you're just going through things. No, there is a spiritual assault against your mind, against your soul, against your heart, against your physical body, and you have to recognize it and cast it down. And so I want to talk about these little areas here. So first of all, when we talk about witchcraft and scripture, there are many things we can talk about. One of the terms for witchcraft is manipulation and control. It is to use your influence in an unauthorized way right? To use your power, to, to manipulate, to control, right? That's one aspect of witchcraft. Another as, aspect, aspect of witchcraft is to implore the power of evil spirits or familiar spirits in order to, to execute an evil agenda in someone's life. It is to speak ill of someone, to speak calamitous words, to implore Satan or to implore evil or an imprecation of evil against someone that use that is spoken, usually spoken out of the mouth, right? We also know that witchcraft can include divination. It can include uh, seduction, confusion. So there are many forms of it, but it's all demonic and you have to learn how to cast it down. You have to learn how to recognize it. Some of you have been under leaders that told you, if you leave this church, you will never be blessed. And and you here you are five years later after leaving that church, and you're still broke. And you're saying, what in the world is going on? You got to break that, that, that witchcraft off of it. You got to say, in the name of Jesus, I break that. I come out of agreement with that. Some of you left an ex-spouse, and that ex-spouse told you, if you leave me, you will never be able to get married again. And you've been, you've been under that bondage, and you're saying you're going to the altar, you're praying, you're fasting, you're, 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 you're saying you're going for counseling and all this kind of stuff, and, and, and you still can't break out of that cycle. You need to break the power of witchcraft off of your mind. Off of your life, those word curses, those words that have been spoken over you that are from the devil. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That is witchcraft and you got to break it. Some of you have been under the witchcraft or the seduction or the manipulation of false prophetic words. Words that did not come from God. They originated from hell. Hellacious words spoken over your life and you came into agreement with those words. And because you came into agreement with those words, you gave the enemy power. Another form of witchcraft, listen, I'm going to expose this last part and I'm going to pray. Another form of witchcraft is evil people. The Bible says evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. In other words, there are agents of darkness. These are people, human beings, but are yielded to demonic power. And they literally fast against you. They pray against you. They speak against you. They tell lies against you. They do all of these things and they're working overtime. And even now as I'm praying, I want to do this because this is so important. Right now we send smoke. <laughs> we spent, we send smoke and derision into the camp of the enemy in the name of Jesus that every, every demonic surveillance against your life and destiny will be deactivated in Jesus name. It will no longer have the veracity or the authority or the access to you. We say access denied. Some of you have, have had surveillance, spiritual surveillance against you through soul ties. You've, you've come into an allegiance with someone or something that was not of God. And right now you need to break the soul tie, break the connection. Come on, 
Break it in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Break that connection. Break that soul tie. Break that interaction in the name of Jesus that is bringing you into bondage. I come against confusion in your mind. The spirit of confusion. Confused thoughts. Confused speech. Con confused dreams in the name of Jesus. I come against the misuse, misappropriation of any spiritual authority in your life that brings you into bondage, that brings you into seduction, that brings you into manipulation, that causes you to be attached in a perverse way, in an ungodly way, in a, in a nefarious way to anything that's outside of God's will. We sever that connection. We break it in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. We break all of that off of your life in Jesus name. And so you have to understand that this is real. You have to use your authority in this season like you've never used it before. You have to be able to be sensitive to what's happened. When listen, sometimes let me show, let me give you some examples of witchcraft. Headaches, migraine headaches. That is that is one of of the telltale signs that you are under a witchcraft attack that's affecting your physical body. Um sometimes it manifests in the form of fatigue, malaise, you, you can't get out of the bed, you can't move, you feel tired, you lose your appetite, you don't want to eat for days and days and days. You need to, you, it might be something physical, I'm not saying it's not something physical, but if it's spiritual, you might want to recognize that's a witchcraft attack against you and take authority over it. There are many people right now who love Jesus, but have died prematurely because they came into agreement with the assignment of the spirit of death against their life and they did not exercise their spiritual authority. It's kind of like uh, uh, somebody's breaking into a home and you have a gun right there on your, your, your counter or the police officer is right there and nobody calls anybody. Nobody grabs the weapon. Nobody locks the door. You just sit there and you say, well, well, whatever the Lord willeth it, if God willeth for me to have a break in, then so be it. Oh, bless God. No, no, no. You, you're going to die. If you sit there and let the devil kill you, he will. I'm telling you. Understand, you got to recognize what this stuff is all about. And so I just want to, I want to give you this because many of you didn't realize you were under attack. You were under siege by the enemy. You were under the influence of something malevolent. And you got to recognize that. And you got to break that off of you. Come on, break that off of your life. Break that off of your mind. Break that off of your finances. Hallelujah. Some of you came into agreement with all kinds. Your mother said you'd never be married. Hallelujah. Some of you have witches, real witches in your family with, with tarot cards and, and all this kind of stuff. And the last thing I want to say is this. What many of you need to be careful of is the syncretism in the church, the mixing, the mixture of light and darkness. You can't be talking about you want a breakthrough and you're going to psychics about who you're supposed to marry. You can't be talking about you want God to bless you with this or that, and you're reading your horoscope every night. Some of you need to come out from Babylon. You need to come out from among them and be separate. You need to loose yourselves from those points of contact in your life that the enemy is exploiting. It, it Listen, you better pray about that thing. Before you engage it, some of this stuff, you see Christian, people talking about Christian witch. There is no Christian witch. There is no Christian witch. Amen. Just demons. Amen. Break it off. I had a meeting one night. Uh, one day we had a healing meeting and these women came. They came from um, uh, somewhere. They came from and they kept staring at me during the whole meeting. And finally they said, please, can you pray? And the Lord wouldn't let me. There was something I couldn't connect with. And finally they confessed that they were witches. They came for power. Hallelujah. But they end up getting saved. And I'm going to tell you something. There's no power like the power of God. There's nothing stronger than the blood of Jesus. There's no authority greater than the name of, you better use it. You better use the name of Jesus. You better use the name of, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are saved. Use the name of Jesus. Break that off of you. Break it off of your family, your children, your finances. I break all witchcraft.
Hallelujah. I break all slander. Some people think that if they talk about you to someone else and malign your name, your character, they will close doors in your life. Do you know that you are a witch if you do that? Do you know that if you sit up here and you try to use your mouth to bring down a man or woman of God, you are a witch? And the Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. I'm telling you right now. So I want to just break this off of you tonight so that you will begin to flow in your destiny. You will begin to flow in your purpose. You will begin to hear from God clearly. You will begin to understand what the Lord is speaking to you in Jesus' name so that you can fulfill the call and the assignment of God on your life. I break it off of you now. I, I speak the peace of God that passes all understanding. I speak divine order into your life in Jesus' name. God bless you. Please share this with somebody.